Hello, my name is Courtney Ainsworth, and I'm here to talk to you about the Chinese culture. So what do you guys think of when you hear Chinese? Capital punishment. All right. Anybody else? Anything else? Chinese food. All right. Um, well, the reason for this presentation today is to better understand the Chinese culture, and I am also going to be comparing the American communication system and ways of life to the Chinese uh, communication system and ways of life. So the reasons I chose China is because I am a law enforcement student and in our courts and jurisdiction class we learned that their judicial system is much different than ours so I kind of wanted to figure out the reasons of why. Um, I also chose it because I had some high school classmates who were adopted from China and we also had a couple foreign exchange students come over who were from the Chinese descent. And in Shano, where I live, we also have a family restaurant called Emperor's Buffet, and they are, um, they have all their kids and everything, they all run the whole thing, and you hear a lot of them talking in their Chinese language, and you see the ways that they, like, uh, eat together and everything. It's really a lot different than ours, and it's, I just wanted to find out why. All right, so the location of geography is, uh, China is located in Eastern Asia, as you can see on the map right over here. Um, they're slightly smaller than the U.S. The significance of the flag that is showing up above is the red signifies revolution, and the four stars that are lined up um, there signify their different social classes. So the working class, peasantry, the uh, urban petty bourgeoisie, and the national bourgeoisie, which is also considered kind of capitalism. Um, the climate there is tropical to the south, since it's more down by like the equator, sort of like where Mexico is for us. And then subarctic to the north, which would be kind of where like Canada is for us. <coughs> the uh, population demographics, they have the number one population in the world, which is just over 1,300,000. Their life expectancy for the male is 73.5 years, and for female is 77.9 years. Their fertility rate is 1.6 children born per every woman. So um, that is also due to their two-child rule. They cannot have more than two children. Their government, their communism, which means they are kind of under a dictatorship governed by a single party, and the state controls their whole economy and everything. And for citizenship, it's not by birth like we have here in the United States. So if you were born there, it's not considered technically citizenship. The only way you get citizenship is by descent. So one of your parents has to be of Chinese <coughs> citizenship in order for you to be considered Chinese citizenship as well. They also do not um, recognize the dual citizenship, which would be like being considered a citizen of two different countries. They don't recognize that at all. Their culture, the official language they speak is either traditional Chinese or Mandarin. The religions that they follow, uh, majority is 21.9% follow their Chinese folk religion, then 18.2% of their population are Buddhism, and then a um, majority of them, 52.2% is unaffiliated, so they do not affiliate with any specific religion. They have 56 different ethnic groups there, the Han Chinese are the most, the 91.6%, the Zhuang are 1.3% of the population, and all 54 other ethnic groups make up only 7.1% of the population. Their values under the Confucianism is, they have three essential values, filial piety, which is respect for one's parents, that's their most uh, fundamental value, they uh, care about that one the most. Then humaneness, which is the care and concern for other human beings. And the last one was the ritual consciousness, which is respect for rituals and the proper way of doing things in the deepest sense. While addressing others in China, they address everybody by last name first and then first name. So if I would be talking to Sarah, I would go, I would address her as Manning Sarah, not Sarah. Uh, they find it very impolite to address people just by their first name. So like here in the United States, we address people Sarah, Cassie, Allie. They find that very impolite, you would address by last name first. And then uh, other one is when you're addressing or when you walk into a room, like if I would walk in here with uh, <coughs> Professor Rathburn, I would address him first because he is higher up. You always address the highest up first and work your way down. For public behavior, 
they have a lot of different things like do's and don'ts that they kind of consider in um, public there. As an initial greeting, as you're just greeting someone, they usually nod first. And a lot of them will go in for a handshake as well. But if you're a foreigner in China, you do not want to be the one to initiate the handshake. You want to let your Chinese counterpart initiate for you. Um, applause is a sign of welcoming. So if you're going into like a school, a theater, or a workplace, or anything like that with a big group, they'll usually applaud to you, and you are expected to applaud back to them. Um, they do not speak with the hands, so like here in the U.S., we do a lot of speaking with hands and everything, hand gestures. If you do that to them, they won't say anything about it, but they'll usually find you very annoying. Um, they, to summon attention, like for us, we just kind of wave uh, anything with our hands, you know. They put their palm down and wave their fingers towards themselves, which is a lot different. I don't know how that works, but... <laughs> Um, they find it very rude to point to anything, like pointing with one finger. If they're going to point <coughs> in a direction, they'll usually use their whole hand. And they dislike being touched, especially if you're a part of authority. They dislike, uh, when you're speaking to them, being touched at all. So if you would go up and put your hand on someone's shoulder or something here in the U.S., they don't like that there. Uh, a couple of other things is they put a heavy emphasis on repressing emotions. So usually when you're walking through, you won't see anybody smiling or anything like that. It's because they try to repress their emotion and everything. Uh, we had this girl, a foreign exchange student, we called her Z because we couldn't pronounce her name. But she came in and she played tennis with me my senior year and she found it very weird how we would smile and laugh all the time. She couldn't get over it, how we all showed our emotions so much. and where she was from, they were taught to repress their emotions. Um, public display of affection is very frowned upon there. So if you're with your mate or something, you can't hold hands, you don't put your arm around them, you don't kiss them or anything in public, uh, except if you're with a friend. Uh, the same sex can hold hands in public to show friendliness. And spitting in public is now deemed what we would consider illegal, and you can actually get a very heavy fine for that now in China. And you do, uh, in China, if you are walking through public or anything, uh, refrain from putting your hands in your mouth. So anything, biting nails, getting food out of your teeth, anything like that, you want to refrain from that because they will usually find that very <coughs> vulgar. Uh, relationship with other countries. China likes to have a good relationship with other countries, or at least they try to. They think big or small, everybody, every country deserves respect and they have no desire to control smaller countries. They think that even since you're a big country, you shouldn't be the one to bully small countries. You should rather be respecting them and helping them out and everything. And if they have disputes or anything with another country, they'll usually solve it through um, dialogue or like consultation, usually try to figure it out that way rather than war or anything like that. The US and China relationship has been kind of rocky through the years. Uh, China proposed a new model of major country relations, but the U.S. has shot it down many times because we don't find it to be the best uh, interest for the Americans. Now we are, the U.S. is seeking positive, cooperative, comprehensive relationship, which means like we're trying to expand our areas where there's good cooperation between the two countries, but we're also trying to address the areas of disagreement and find our compromise in there. Notable, notable achievements through the um, Chinese have made are a lot of inventions like paper making, gunpowder, the compass, porcelain, um, harvesting of silk, tea production, mechanical clock, and the making of alcohol. So when you go over to China, the main things you're just going to want to remember is address them by the last name first. Uh, always address the authority person first before you address anybody else. Do not express your emotions or talk with your hands. They'll usually find you annoying or rude. And do not be touching them while you are talking to them. Thank you for listening. <laughs>